In this video I will show you the game between Magnus Carlsen and Richard Rapport played in round 6 of the Grand Cup Chess Classic 2024. And so far, halfway the tournament after 5 rounds, both players are in the lead with 3 points. Now they are playing each other again. And remember, early in the week I covered the game played between Richard and Magnus. Magnus lost that game after a huge blunder, so he is definitely on the lookout for revenge. Now he's playing with the white pieces, and let's see what happens in this game. It's incredibly exciting, and we get to see an incredibly high-level game. Here we go. Magnus, playing with the white pieces, goes for the move 1d4. After knight f6, c4, e6, knight to f3, c5 is played. And that's very interesting, because we get the Benoni opening, and interestingly, that was also the opening Magnus played earlier himself in the tournament on the very same day, in fact, against um, Vincent Keimer. He played it with the black pieces. Now the Benoni, we don't see it very often, but it's interesting to see when it's getting played because the positions are just very exciting. So black goes for the move d6. Knight c3, pawn takes d5, c takes d5, g6. And Magnus goes here for the move a3. Bishop to g7, and now he goes for the move e4, and black castles kingside. This position has been played thousands of times. There are a lot of different ways of playing here, and the most common move for white is to play bishop d3 to protect the pawn on e4, supporting the center, castle kingside next. And in general, the positions are somewhat better for white. That's how it has been considered. However, the latest trend here is to play instead the move bishop to e3 first. Very interesting move. So the difference is that now, after the move rook to e8, black is attacking the pawn on, um, on e4, and rather than defending that uh, pawn on e4 by playing the move bishop d3, you want to play here the move knight to d2. This is, in fact, a very typical maneuver in a lot of uh, Benoni, Kingsinian type of structures. Very often, the bishop is still on c1. Now the bishop is already on e3. White is nicely protecting its center, ready to get a bishop into the game, castle kingside, and white is just somewhat better thanks to more space. So let's see how this goes. Black first tried here to move a6, typical Benoni move, trying to expand on the queen side with a move b5 coming next. Black is, uh, if he can do that, he's doing uh, very well, of course. However, the typical response here is to play a4 to neutralize uh, black's uh, majority on, uh, on that wing, preventing b5. Now, things are getting very exciting. S, look at what happens now. Knight takes e4. Black sacrifices the knight in the center. And the idea is that after knight takes e4, the pawn goes to f5 to hit the knight on e4. And white is not able to stick to that extra piece. Because if the knight goes, let's say, for instance, to c3, the pawn will go even further to f4. And here you see black is regaining the minor piece because the bishop on e3 is pinned. Magnus, he is familiar with all of this. He decided, okay, I cannot stick to the piece. I just continue developing. I play here the move bishop e2. Black, of course, takes on e4. And now the knight comes into c4. This is interesting because black is a pawn up. But okay, the pawn is not too dangerous. And most importantly, this knight on c4 looks fantastic. Why is this knight so good? Well, there are ideas even to play a5. And uh, then maybe the knight can come into uh, to b6. But apart from that, the knight is doing fantastic on this blockading square c4 with ideas to attack the pawn on d6 even more. So Magnus admitted that he had even seen the move played by uh, Rapport in his uh, preparation before the game. As Rapport played here the move a5 to prevent white from ever playing that move him, uh, himself. But Magnus also said afterwards that it was not easy for him to recall all the details. So he decided here to play the move bishop f4. Very interesting move, logical move to attack the pawn on d6. And um, yeah, there are various ways of uh, dealing with that pawn. But bishop f8 is, uh, is played. You don't want to give up that pawn too easily. And what is white's compensation? Well, two minor pieces are looking great. Black is a pawn up, but all its pieces are on the back rank. And also the king is a bit open. So 
how is white going to build up its position? There is time to improve the position here. That is, uh, that is clear. We start here with a move rook to a3. Very interesting, creative way of uh, getting the rook into the action. Now black goes for the move knight a6. Typical plan as well, because after castling kingside, the knight comes to b4. And this is usually a great square for the knight. Why? Well, it can no longer be challenged by a white pawn. So the knight is stable there. But there are also some drawbacks to have that knight on, uh, on b4. We will see later in the game. White continues with uh, the mobilization of all its uh, forces. The queen comes to d2. So now it uh, forms a nice battery with the bishop. And uh, well, later on, maybe the bishop is able to, uh, to do something on the uh, c1, h6 uh, diagonal. Black goes for the move b6. Interesting move. Um, you are supporting your pawns. Not that it's really needed, but if you go back one second, what else should black do? I mean, it's not so easy to get the bishop from c8 into the game. If you play a move like bishop f5, white right, can even consider just kicking the bishop uh, away. So therefore, black decides this move, b6, and white, Continues with its attacking plans. Now rook g3 is on the board. Beautiful rook lift. No need to keep the rooks connected on the back rank if you can bring your rook over there. And even though you don't have an immediate threat, you can feel the pressure exerted by the rook against uh, the black king. So what, uh, what should uh, do um, black uh, next here? Well, difficult uh, to say. It's uh, not so easy because you have played... The pawn to b6. The queen also got to keep both pawn weaknesses uh, defended. And um, I think something like bishop a6 uh, seriously comes into consideration with the idea of trading off that bishop for the knight at, uh, at some point. I think it does make uh, a lot of sense. However, there followed the move rook to a7. And I, I think it's another... Uh, advantage of having played the move b6 to be able to employ your rook along the seventh rank. The rook can come over to, to support the, the black king. But now white seizes the initiative with the key move h4. Very nice idea. And of course white wants to open up that uh, g file by targeting the pawn on g6. If you do take on h4 there is bishop g5 and the queen is just uh, getting a trap now. There are no squares to go to. So pawn is poisoned. Black played here the move rook to f7 with the idea to get the queen over very soon as uh, as well to f6 to uh, to hit the bishop. But here first, uh, before, just continue with the plan of uh, h5. There is queen f6 attacking the bishop, but maybe also the queen can come to, to d4. There's a bit of counterplay. You don't want to allow it. So bishop g5 is, uh, is played attacking the queen. And now the queen has to make a uh, concession. If it goes to c7 to keep both pawns defended, it's a bit off sight. It's not very nice. White will continue with h5. So that's the idea of inserting that move bishop g5 first. So black instead played here bishop e7. Bishops are getting exchanged. And you can recapture in three possible ways. But whatever you do, you know that on the next move, in the game there followed queen takes e7, but also after any other move, h5 would be played. And here you see... There is more pressure against the pawn on g6. You don't want white uh, to capture there uh, twice. Bishop f5 played. And now, of course, this pawn on b6, it's, uh, it's hanging. It can be taken. Could have been even taken on the previous move. But we are not interested in the pawn. It's all about trying to seize the initiative. Because we have a better king's position, better peace configuration, and... A safer king. So let's try to trade off the most important defenders. Bishop g4. Excellent uh, move. And uh, now the idea is to take on f5 followed by taking on g6. So black decides here to take uh, himself. Bishop takes g4. Rook takes g4. So now pawn on g6 is uh, threatened to be taken again. And well, you've got to defend that, uh, that pawn. And the question is how to do it. I guess that rook f6 is the best move. So the idea is that now the queen is still trying to guard the seventh rank. The rook is defending uh, the pawn from the side, even defending the pawn on, on d6. 
but it's still very complicated and I'm I'm not sure what, what is happening. You've got to reckon with ideas like Queen H6 or, or first Rook E1 to uh, increase the pressure against the pawn on E4. In any case, Rook F6 was not played. And very understandable, he, he goes for the move Rook G7. So in a way, you are unpinning the pawn on uh, G6. So, you know, the, the, the problem in chess is that you, you don't want to play a move like Rook F6. Because if you do play Rook F6, your, your pawn is still pinned and you want to, as a defender, you want to release that, uh, that tension. So therefore, rook g7. But now, rather than taking on g6 or advancing the pawn, I really think Magnus evaluated the position uh, fantastically here by playing the move rook e1. It's, it's just a great idea. And uh, he is intending to regain uh, that pawn on e4 at, at, at some point. And there, there are so many weaknesses all over the place. It's, it's really difficult to, uh, to defend. I mean, if, if you move the queen away, you, you take on e4. And in such position, I mean, you can still fight. Eh? Material is even. But in the long run, white is just much better because of all these pawn weaknesses and the saver king. So maybe that's something black should have considered. But the move played by uh, Rapport is, is very consistent. He has just played the move rook g7. So he wants to take um, on h5, eliminating that annoying pawn. And probably he felt like, okay, the position is still holdable for, for black. But now, brilliant judgment by, uh, by Magnus. He takes on e4. And that's the sort of move which a lot of people would react on, uh, on general grounds. Like, taking on e4 allows black to uh, take on e4. In fact, it's the only move. If you move the queen away, the rook on e8 will be taken. So queen takes e4, rook takes e4, rook takes e4, knight takes d6. And there's this eternal question whether the queen or the two rooks, which, which of the two it's, it's a better, um, uh, better for, for one side. That's hard to evaluate. You, you would think here at first that black, black should be okay. But surprisingly enough, black is that lost. That's something I would probably also have failed to, to judge from, from afar. Now we are going to delve deeper into the position. We will understand what is going on because the rook is under a threat. And Black's King is still wide open and the Knight on B4 is totally offside. Now, if you move the, the Rook somewhere, in the game there, there followed uh, Rook E5. I should also say that if you stay on the E-file with Rook E7, there's Knight F5 with a, with a Knight Fork. So that's also not going to work. So Rook E5 is played. So you're attacking the Pawn on D5. Very logical. But now Magnus just, just plays this move, F4, attacking the Rook on E5. And, well, rook takes d5, you even do have a double attack, attacking the, both the queen and the knight. But here there's the move queen e2. You just go away with the queen, and that knight cannot be captured because of queen e8 with checkmate. Fantastic line. So let's take that back, uh, that last move for, for black. Rook takes d6 is not possible, but the queen is coming in to e8. It's the main threat. So you got to do something about it. h6 was played. So that the king can now try to go to h7. But after queen e6, the queen finds a way to, to infiltrate anyway. And here, black just resigned. You're surprised, right? Why did black resign here? Well, if you go king f8, it's checkmate on, on e8 anyway. But after king h7, there are no good moves. The rooks are not working together. The knight on b4 is out of play. There are no counter threats against the white king. The simplest continuation, I would say, the, the most human move here is knight f5. With the idea to take the pawn on h6 or even take the rook on g7. And if you play rook g6, well, there is queen f7 with check. And um, after the king goes to h8, there is queen takes g6 and it's going to be checkmate in the view. And if you do something else, let's say you, uh, you play here to move rook d7, that's something... You could seriously consider to, to connect the rooks to avoid immediate tactics against these pieces. Now, once again, you, you can take the pawn on h6. Makes a lot of sense. But knight e7, it's a move I really like a lot. Because now you see that the rook is no longer defending the king. And there is not much you can do against the threat of uh, queen g8 or, or even uh, queen g6 first. So black will be forced to give up the rook for the knight, but in, in such position, you're just dead lost. You will uh, be able to wrap up more pawns or try to uh, make sure that the pawn will come forward very soon. So 
very smooth victory for Magnus Carlsen. And because of that, he managed to get back into the sole lead after that painful loss in round one. Magnus is playing fantastically brilliant games, very convincing game, defeating Rapport in crushing style. Probably the best game of the tournament so far, if you would ask me. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you do like this uh, video. And of course, give the video a like, tell it to your friends. Make sure to get back to the channel frequently. And I will cover many more exciting games from the Grand Chess Classic and many more.